bless you, Lord. He paid a debt he did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. Amen. And now I sing a brand new song. Amen. Amen. Yes, he did. He Amen. My soul and Amen. Set me free. Amen. That's right. done for us and so at this time brother jeff uh, is going to come forward and security you be ready in case they yeah. want something else besides uh, uh, a guitar but uh, <laughs> anyway uh, he's going to tell us a little bit about he and his family the work that god's called him into and share a song uh, with us this evening so brother jeff we appreciate you visiting with us tonight brother and uh, you just introduce yourself and tell us what the lord's uh, uh, doing in your life amen well, it's good to be in God's house. Yes, amen. amen. Good to feel the Spirit of God, amen. amen. On the preacher, that's always good, isn't it? Yes, amen. That's what we need more across this country. Well, I'm Brother Dan Sherwood, my wife Amanda, Michaela Listen, Jerrica. I've uh, been serving the Lord for quite a few years now, saved at a young age, called to preach. Uh, ran from the Lord for a little while, went to the wrong place, though. I ran to the United States Marine Corps. I uh, thought that maybe I was going to run from God there, and I found out that you can't run from God, amen, if he's calling Amen, that's right. That's right. And uh, so if you cut me tonight, I'd believe red, white, and blue, amen. I'm an American. Amen. amen. From amen, the brother. bottom of my feet to the top of my head, amen. Amen. And uh, as I began to seek the Lord's will, I realized the Lord put in my heart this great nation. Amen. So a lot of people don't look at America as, an, as, a, as a land that needs preachers, right, as a, as a mission place, but... I've got news for you. We're in a mess. Yes, right, 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 you're right, 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 right. And if you don't know that, then I can't help you with that. Amen. All I'm telling you is we're in a mess, That's right. and um, we need we we need the Lord to move again in this land. Yes. Um, my wife and I met in a church over twenty something years ago, and the church is no longer in existence. A thriving church, East Latin Baptist Church in Tampa, Florida, and you'd have never thought that it'd be closed in twenty something years' time from our meeting. The church we got married in, the steeple's falling off the building. It's no longer meet. The doors are locked. These are churches that were thriving in Florida many, many, many years. And um, God began to burden our hearts. So we went out west. We went out to Idaho. We went out to South Dakota and Montana and spent some time out in the west starting churches, established three churches and pastored some. And evangelism now just trying to reach out to... Uh, to strengthen the things that remain. That's the Lord's, that's the verse that the Lord put on my heart was to strengthen the things which remain. You know, there's some things left yes. that we need to strengthen. Yes. Amen. Amen. If we don't take a stand, if we don't keep standing like we have over the years, this thing is going to go under quicker than it's going. Amen. Yes. And, uh, Amen. So that's you right, help brother. us pray because we, uh, we're just, we're just locals. I work a job. I'm, 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 I've been working for myself. The Lord gave me a good business. I do work in, insurance and financial planning and retirement planning. I get to see a lot of folks. And um, so we take care of ourselves in that manner. We don't beg churches for money. I, I go around and I preach as God leads. I go around, we sing. We've been a blessing in a lot of places. And of course, the Lord's always provided. Can I get a witness? Yes. Amen. Amen. God ever, I mean, David said, I've been young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor seek. Amen. Is that right? Amen. God's Hallelujah. been better to us than we deserve. Amen. In this Amen. Nation. But 
Um, I, I plan on staying until the day I die. Amen? Yes, sir. That's my yes, plan. That's my plan is to stand until Jesus comes. Um, and you say, well, I can't do a whole lot, Brother Dan. Well, the Bible said having done all, stand. Right. Amen. There's, right. Not, Amen. Well, there's not one person in here that can't stand. Amen. I mean, stand your ground when people come and ask you what you believe and how you stand. I just pick up that old King James Bible. Amen, Amen brother. Amen. 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 And say, I just believe what God had to say. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. You know, that's that's what we can do in this day and hour. I'm not I'm not laying down the sword, the shield of faith. I believe as it gets darker, it just gives us an opportunity to get brighter. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. So my wife's coming. They all help me sing. And uh, no, it's not anything other than a guitar. <laughs> although, I, although I have been known to carry something before, I do believe every God called man in this country ought to carry something. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Y'all take that for what it's worth. Amen. Amen. Uh, but I believe we ought to carry something. Amen. Amen. Right. And make sure our family's protected. Amen. 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 Well, it's a good thing to sing thank you, Lord. Let's just sing some thank you, Lord. You know, Bless it won't, it won't bother God. It won't bother God at all if you always want to thank Him a little bit tonight. Amen. Hey, that's right. We could never thank Him enough. Is that right? That's right. Look at here. Y'all got a friend singing with me that night. Isn't that nice? Hey, she must really like y'all. All right, y'all. Let's sing loud on this. Thank you, Lord. For you. still the greatest nation on the face of this earth. Amen. 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 And beloved, uh, Amen. we certainly need to pray for our nation. And Brother Jeff, uh, uh, if we didn't have uh, that meeting already lined up, I've been announcing that for a few weeks now. Uh, but uh, I'll be back in touch with you, brother, and maybe we can have you back in, uh, in the days to come. Amen. And uh, you said uh, you said you'd uh, been safe for how many years now? Oh, goodness. Uh, 39 years. 39 years. 
Amen. My goodness, did y'all have a pre-arranged marriage? Because neither one of you is looking day over 29. Yeah, amen. And amen. Are, are, are these adopted children? Amen. <laughs> well, when I was listening to his testimony, I was like, my goodness, they must have had a... six. I'll take 29. And when he said that, I'm like, my soul, he don't look a day over 29 at all. And everything. And so, uh, anyway, we sure appreciate y'all being here tonight. Amen. Yeah, uh, brother, I'll, I've got your card up here, and I'll be getting back in touch with you, maybe have you back over if that would be okay, brother. But thank you for being here tonight. Amen. 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 All right. Well, if you have your Bibles with you tonight, uh, turn to the book of 2 Timothy. Uh, we've been studying the book of 2 Timothy, and uh, we're in verse, uh, or excuse me, chapter number 3, and, and we're in verse number 3, and I know we've been on these, uh, these uh, characteristics and these traits and lifestyles for several weeks. Uh, uh, and you say, preacher, why are you going over this in such great detail and everything? Well, beloved, a lot of times when people do their Bible reading, they read over words and they don't completely understand exactly what the scriptures are saying. Uh, some people understand, some don't. And so that's why we're looking at these in depth. And so that way, when you're reading other portions of scripture and this is referenced to, you'll understand a little bit more about what you're reading and what God's trying to say. Amen. And so anyway, 2 Timothy chapter number 3 uh, chapter number 3, we'll pick up reading of verse number 1, and we'll read down through verse number 4 here this evening. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 1, the Word of God tells us this, Know also, uh, beloved, uh, this, uh, this affirmation in this portion of Scripture has came true. Yes, it's sir. happening right before our very eyes, amen. Yes, sir. Uh, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Amen. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Let's stop right there and let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask the Lord to bless the reading of the scriptures here this evening. Dear, kind, and gracious Heavenly Father, we are thankful for this time that you've allowed us to come to your house yes. and worship thee in spirit and truth. And Lord, uh, we do come to thee with thanksgiving in our heart for the very breath of life you've given us to enjoy creation and for the shoes on our feet and the clothes on our back, dear Lord, and for uh, a place to come to, dear Lord, uh, with other believers uh, to gather together to worship thee in spirit and truth. And we're thankful for your word and for the instruction and truth and guidance that we receive from thy word. And Lord, we can say that we love you tonight because you first loved us. And Lord, as we look to the bread of life tonight, Lord, I pray that you'd feed our spiritual souls. Yes, I pray that we all would open up our ears and our hearts to the preaching of thy word, that we'd be closer drawn to thee tonight, Father. And Lord, I'd ask and pray tonight that you would help me as I preach. Yes. Lord, I'd ask that you give me that anointing of the Holy yes. Ghost to preach with clarity of thought and clarity of speech. Strengthen my voice and my lungs tonight that I may be able to declare thy blessed word. And Father, if there's one here tonight that's in our midst, that's unsure or lost and never trusted your son, Jesus Christ, as Lord and Savior, I pray that you convict their heart of sin. Uh, Lord, uh, convict their heart of judgment to come. And I pray that they'd come forward tonight and be born again before it's eternally too late. And Lord, we just thank you and praise you for what you've done. And Lord, we thank you and praise you for what you're going to do. For it's in Christ's name we do ask it all. And amen. Amen. Last week we left off verse number three, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, and continent. And tonight we're going to pick up with fears. Uh, beloved, we're living in a society today where people are hateful. Uh, this word translated here literally means to be brutal, uh, to be severely unkind. Is that not the generation that we're living in today? Right. Uh, as uh, uh, the dear brother and his family saying about thank you, Lord, and we should be thankful for all the many blessings that God gives us each and every day. There are people today that are unthankful. There are people today that hate Christianity. There are those that hate truth and righteousness, and they're brutal about it, uh, beloved. Uh, they uh, cut no slack. Uh, they take no prisoners, if you will. Uh, beloved, they, uh, uh, they are unloving and they are unkind. And beloved, that is the generation and society that we're living in today. And beloved, if you're a Christian, uh, don't think that that's going to put you at the top of the popularity polls tonight. Uh, beloved, if you make a stand for Jesus and you stand up for truth and righteousness and you proclaim 
Thus saith the Lord, you're putting a bullseye on your back. And let me tell you something, people are going to mock you. People are going to persecute you. People are going to be unkind to you. You may get looked over for that job promotion. You may not be asked to go out on the fellowship dinner. But bless God, I'd rather be in the center of God's will and stand up for truth and righteousness and be a light in this dark and dying world than have the approval of men. Amen. We ought rather to be more concerned about pleasing our Heavenly Father than about pleasing men. Amen. And beloved, you can rest assured tonight that if you live for God, you are going to suffer persecution. Ask yourself this question. Jesus Christ, who was the incarnate God, came here to this earth to seek and to save that which was lost, he came to his own. His own received him not. He was mocked. He was despised. He was rejected. And this is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords we're talking about. And beloved, if they treated, if mankind treated Jesus that way, don't think for a second they won't treat us that way. Amen. And so, beloved, uh, uh, tonight, uh, beloved, as you go outside these doors, and you desire to be a light and be a witness and be an encouragement to others, you better be ready for some unkind things to be said to you. And you better be ready to suffer persecution tonight. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 5, verse number 7, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Uh, beloved, with so much civil unrest and social unjust that's taken place in our nation tonight, uh, beloved, the election outcome is not going to change that. I don't care who's placed in the office. There's still going to be social unrest. There's still going to be division. There's still going to be discord. The only way that we will unite together in one spirit, in one accord, is for all men, no matter of their, of their, of their color, no matter of their race, it's for all men to come to the saving knowledge of the Prince of Peace. Amen. Blessed are the peacemakers. Amen. 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 And beloved, Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. And beloved, when an individual gets saved, he'll look past differences and he'll see the value of that person's soul. Amen. And he'll realize that this person is my neighbor. And he'll understand when the scriptures teach us Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Uh, beloved, your neighbor is not the person that lives next to you or across the street from you. The neighbor that you and I come into contact with as a child of God is whoever comes across your path Amen. that day. Right. That is your neighbor. Yes, sir. Yeah. And beloved, we certainly need to tell others about Jesus Christ. And it's so easy to let politics get in the way. It is so easy to let flesh get take over our thinking and our actions. That's right. uh, beloved, I, I'll be honest with you. When I watch the news and I hear discussions take place out in the workplace and out in the community, there are times, and excuse the pun, that I'm going to get fighting mad about some things. And I have to take a step back and I have to pray and ask God to give me, to give me wisdom and to give me direction to be a light and be a witness and to display the love of Christ in my heart, and in my life. The way to overcome evil is not with evil, but with good. That's right. mm -hmm. And we've all heard this saying, we need to kill them with kindness. Mm -hmm. And sometimes what people, the reason they rebel, the reason they act the way that they do, is to get attention. They're crying out, somebody listen to me. Somebody care for me. And it breaks my heart when I hear testimony of some of these little boys and girls, the teenage boys and girls, and they go off and they get into trouble and you hear their testimony and they say, all I ever wanted is for mama and daddy to pay attention to me and to love me. They're starving for love. Amen. Amen. And beloved, Jesus Christ tasted death for every man. Amen. Right. And beloved, even though we cannot love without a guppy type of love that Jesus Christ loves with, Beloved, you and I can have the love of Christ in our heart and we can love others and look past our differences and look past skin color and look past race and see the most valuable thing that that individual carries is their soul. Amen. Why shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world 
and lose his own soul. And Jesus Christ knew a little bit about business. What shall it profit? What are you going to gain from this? If you have everything the world has to offer and lose your own soul, That's still right. won't be enough. That's right. And so, beloved, we need to realize the importance of an individual soul and tell them about Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 12, verses 17 through 21, recompense or repay to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as life in you, now notice the command, live peaceably with all men. If it be possible, as much as life within you. Now, beloved, there are some people that you're going to come across you are not going to be able to talk to reasonably or sensibly. But beloved, you've got to try. You've got to try. If it be possible, as much as lies within you, live peaceably with all men. Uh, beloved, some, uh, some people today don't even give peace a chance. Uh, they make a stand, they make a statement, and they say this is the way it is, and they, they soon fight you over, uh, over something instead of trying to work it out and live peacefully. Uh, beloved, as a child of God, uh, beloved, we ought to seek after peace. Amen. The Bible tells us, blessed are the peacemakers. Notice here in verse number 19, dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place, uh, uh, dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Uh, beloved, why don't you uh, turn that thing over to the Lord, make it a matter of prayer, and let him take care of it. Now, beloved, there's been times that I've been fighting mad. I've wanted to put on the boxing gloves. And that probably never bodes well for me to do that. Uh, it seems like every time I get in a situation, somebody's larger and stronger and quicker than I am. And I'm like, how come I always get in these situations? <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, there's been times that I've took a step back and said, Lord, I'm going to turn this over to you. Now listen, I don't compromise and I don't apologize for what's right, amen. That's right. But there are some people that you're simply not going to change their mind. And if you try to get back and you try to get even, just like the flesh urges us to do, you're not going to make the situation any better. You're only going to make it worse. Amen. And beloved, when you get into an argument and you give, you give over to wrath and give over to anger, anger, uh, beloved, if you're not careful, you'll end up losing your testimony. That's right, that's right. There'll be some adjectives, there'll be some vernacular that comes out of your out of your mouth that is not well pleasing to the Lord, and then after after it comes out of the tongue. And by the way, do you remember what we studied about the tongue in James chapter three? We went into that in great detail, did we not? The tongue, no man can tame. Right. But beloved, once those words are out, you can't grab them and put them back in, the damage is already done. That's right. And so the best thing to do is just commit it to the Lord, Amen. to the righteous judge, and let him work it out and let him take care of it. And that way you can still maintain your testimony and still have power and still be a light. But if you get out here and show yourself and have a bunch of words that come out of your mouth uh, that bring shame and reproach upon the name of Jesus Christ, and you say, I'm sorry, let me tell you about Jesus and invite you to come to church. They're going to look at you and laugh at you. And they're going to call you the H word. And we all know what that is, don't we? Hypocrite. And so, beloved, be careful about taking judgment into your own hands. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt reap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Amen. How about that? Amen. Kill him with kindness. That's right. And then notice the next thing here that uh, the, the scriptures give us. Uh, despisers of those that are good. Uh, beloved, let me tell you something. This world hates Christianity. That's right. It is just that simple. And the world that we live in is so filled up with religion Christianity is not a religion. Uh, it's a way of life. It's a relationship with Jesus Christ. And beloved, if you stand up for the Lord, you can rest assured that you're going to suffer persecution. You're going to, uh, you're going to be mocked and you're going to be made fun of. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verses 9 through 14, uh, the Word of God tells us, 
For I think that God has set forth us the apostles, the apostles last, as they were appointed to death, for we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are honorable, but we are despised. Even to this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place. And labor working with their own hands, being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we suffer it. Being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world and are the offscaring of all things unto this day. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. And beloved, just as the Apostle Paul was warning the believers here at the church of Corinth, Hey, let me tell you something. Rejoice as we talked about this morning and thank God for the gift of salvation that God has given each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. But beloved, when you announce that on Facebook and you tell your family about it, not everybody's going to rejoice about your decision for Jesus Christ. That's right. Uh, the Bible says that the, uh, the, uh, the enemies of a man are that of his own household. Sometimes your own family will make fun of you and mock you because of your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. But, beloved, your family didn't die on the cross for your sins. Jesus Christ did. Amen. And, beloved, you're to put him first and foremost in your life. Now, yes, you ought to love your parents and you ought to love your children. But as a child of God, your first love is Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, Bible talks about hating your father and mother and I've had people come up and ask me about that portion of scripture that's shared in the gospel accounts. I believe Jesus Christ is not teaching individuals to hate their parents. That word hate translated means to love less. Right. Yes, you're to honor your father and mother and you're to love your parents. But there's one that you're to love above them. That's right. And it's Jesus Christ. Amen. That's right. Now my dad's here tonight. I hope he's still awake. And he gets back there in that security room by himself sometimes. I think he has a tendency to catch a few weeks. <laughs> and so we may have to go back there and check on him here in a minute. I love my dad with all my heart. He's my best friend. He's my role model. He's my hero. Yeah, Dad, I'm hitting you up for something if you're listening. <laughs> my wife is here. I love my wife with all my heart. She's my soulmate. She's my helpmate. I thank God for her and I love her. And just as much as my wife is forgiving, and trust me, she is, there's one that has forgiven more than her. And that's Jesus Christ. Amen. And I think my wife would die for me. I think my dad would die for me. And I likewise would die for my wife. And I'd die for my dad. Beloved, there's one that died for all of us. Amen. Amen. And that's Jesus Christ who shed his blood on the cross of Calvary that all those that by faith call upon his name can have eternal life. Through him, praise be to God. Amen. He is worthy of our love tonight. Amen. Amen. Right. We love him. Why? Because he first loved us. He loved me before I was ever born. He loved you before you were ever born. Right. Uh, and people today come up to me and say, Preacher, I love God. And uh, he's, he's my first love. And I love him and I live for him. But yet they haven't been to church in six and eight months. There's willful sin in their life and they advertise it on Facebook. They're not ashamed of their lifestyle. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll do what? You'll obey my commandments. Amen. That's, right. That's how we demonstrate our love for the Lord is obeying his word. And when I hear people say that and I look at them and I identify their lifestyle and what they're doing, I'm like, well, you must not love him too much. Because there's a lot of disobedience in your life. There's something wrong. Okay. And beloved, tonight, what's wrong with our nation? Uh, beloved, the judicial system is a mess, is it not? That's right. The political system is a mess tonight. Uh, beloved, our nation, as Brother Dan said, is in a mess tonight. Amen? And beloved, our churches tonight are in a mess. There is such a great falling away of apostasy, not only in America, but across the world. There's a great falling away tonight. And beloved, what we need is we need revival back in America. Amen. And beloved, what our churches tonight need to reestablish. And I'm not talking about the structure when I'm talking about the church tonight. I'm not talking about the building in the parking lot 
That's not the church. That's right. The church tonight are the individuals in here tonight Amen. that have trusted in the one true and living God that are saved. You're the living church tonight. Amen. We're the living church tonight. Amen. 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 What we need. We talk about it all the time. We want revival. We need revival in America. But we need to get back to one fundamental truth. We need to come back to our first love. Amen. Is Amen. Jesus Christ. We don't need to be concerned what the politicians say. We don't need to worry about what the courts say. We don't need to worry about what the world says. We just need to get back to our first love. We need to ask God to forgive us. We need to ask God to cleanse us. And we need to ask God for that Holy Ghost power to fall back on our churches. Amen. And beloved, it can happen tonight Amen. if we get back to our first love. But we love numbers more than we love God. We love popularity more than we love God. Oh, look here. 5,000 hits on our Facebook page. Keep the movies coming. Keep the entertainment coming. And you take a church that preaches hellfire and brimstone, and you put that on Facebook, and you might get three views and get some thumbs down. Come on, brother. And let me tell you something. Give me them thumbs down. <laughs> That's all right. Amen. Because Jesus said, blessed are those that are persecuted for his name's sake. That's right. When you give me a thumbs down, you just give me a compliment. Amen. Amen. Right. That means I've said something to speak to your heart. <laughs> Got you thinking anyway. Amen. Amen. But beloved, tonight, fears and despises those that are good. If you're going to live for God, you better get ready to suffer persecution. That's right. But you know what? That's only going to be temporary. Because one day when we get into heaven and you stand before God at the judgment seat of Christ and you bow down and you look up to the Lord and you bow down and you look up to Him and praise His name and He's going through and giving you account at the beam of seat of Christ for what you have or have not done. If you stood true, if you stood faithful, if you didn't give in, if you made a stand, He'll look down. And say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. What Jesus Christ is looking for some thoroughly cooked Christians tonight. Are you well done? You'll get that here in a minute. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> he wants some rare Christians tonight. He's wanting some well done Christians. Amen. Want some well done Christians. Well, beloved, we'll stop there. That's all I have for us tonight. And at this time, I'd like for the musicians to make their way to the instrument. I'd like for everybody to stand, please. Everyone standing, everyone's heads bowed, everyone's eyes closed. I'll ask a question here tonight. Maybe there's someone here this evening and the Holy Spirit of God has spoken to your heart and you're here tonight and you've never been saved or you're unsure where you would spend eternity. Friend, if you're here tonight and you've never been saved or you're not for sure where you'd spend eternity, I'd like for you to raise your hand at this time and say, Preacher, pray for me. I'm not going to come to you and embarrass you. I'm not going to call you out. But I am going to pray for you that you'll come forward tonight and let somebody take the word of God and show you how you can know for sure heaven will be your home for eternity. Anybody like that? Say, preacher, pray for me. I'm lost or I'm unsure. Would you pray for me? Just slip your hand up, put it right back down. All right, I speak to saved people now. Say, preacher, when you pray, would you pray for me and my family? Me and my family have many needs and the Lord knows all about them. And when you pray, would you include me and my family in your prayers? Would you slip your hand up at this time? God bless you. I see those hands. Hands all over the auditorium. God bless you. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, you saw the hands that were raised. You know the needs of your people. And Lord, I pray for each and every person, each and every family that's here. I ask and pray that your hand of blessing would be upon each and every one that's here tonight. And for those that could not be here tonight, Lord, you know their needs, you know their circumstance, and I pray that you would bless them wherever they may be at. And Father, I pray now that you would bless this invitation. Have your will and way for it's in Christ's name we do ask it all. And now with the heads bowed and eyes closed as Miss Chris plays the hymn, if God's speaking to your heart, I invite you to come this evening.
of God tells us to cast all of our care upon Him, for He careth for you. He loves you and He cares for you and He wants to help you this evening. It may be a spiritual need, it may be a physical need, it may be a financial need, an employment need, whatever it is, why don't you come give it to Jesus tonight, amen? Draw nigh to God and He will draw nigh unto you. God bless you and all God's people said. Amen. 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 Well, at this time.